What's up everybody? It's the Bipolar Prophet and welcome to Maple Farm and Farming Simulator 22. Yay! BP is finally going to start actually playing Farm Sim 22 uh, on Maple Farm. So if you guys have seen some of my other Farm Sim 22 videos, they've basically been music videos. I did the one talking video where I, you know, asked and answered the question, would I spend my own money on Farm Sim 22? Which, of course, I didn't. My good friend Cavalier Roy, the creator of this map, uh, actually bought me Farm Sim 22 because, as everybody knows, um, I've been extremely busy for the last year and, well, two years now, really, uh, at, at my job. I just haven't had time. Um, I haven't had time to follow anything. I haven't had time to, to get into anything. Um, things have calmed down a little bit now my hours aren't quite so crazy so i thought that i could probably get away with making some videos when i got home from work uh so roy you know in his generosity as he's done so many times for all the members of the monkey show our gaming group um uh, he, he bought me the game and he said hey have a go you know and uh and, and see what you think i covered what i thought of farm sim 22 and my would i spend my own money on farm sim 22 video the, the quick answer for those of you who may not have watched that is yes i would uh it is really really good so I wanted to do a honest to God series on Farm Sim 22 and I knew I wanted to do it on Maple Farms because it's a fantastic map as you would expect. Um, you know Cavalier Roy has been making Farm Sim maps since you know the, the very earliest iterations of Farm Sim and they just get better and better and better every map. Um, this is Maple Farm. It's it's loosely based in Ireland. Where in Ireland? I don't know. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's it's Ireland. It doesn't really matter where it is. It can be wherever you want it to be. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not giving it a specific place because I, I don't really worry about it. It's, it's a lot like Old Ridge, right? Old Ridge was in England. It wasn't a specific place in England. Uh, it just became a living place after so many years of playing on it in so many episodes. So... As you can see, it's August. Uh, that's when the game starts you. I am in start from scratch mode. Um, you start with $500,000. I have bought a chunk of land um, and this uh, John Deere Gator just to get around the map. Um, so I will drive to the chunk of land that I bought. And while we drive there, I'll jump in the cab here and get it fired up. Um, while we drive there, I will, I will explain to you what this series is going to be. Um, and possibly just as importantly, what it isn't going to be. What it isn't going to be is a survival series. Um, I, I toyed with the idea of a survival series. I think the survival series are a lot of fun. There's a lot of them out there, right? Every all the big, you know, the big high-end farm sim YouTubers are doing some level of survival series. So, do you really need BP to do one? Not really. Am I going to be any good at it? Probably not. It's not really the way I play farm sim, right? And I didn't want to subject you guys to, you know, bad videos, right? It's one thing to be dumb, you know, and for, for stuff to go wrong. And, and you know, and it's farm sim. Things are going to go wrong. And, you know, I'm not going to be perfect all the time. And I'm going to make mistakes and everything else. Uh, but it's a whole other thing to um, try to do something in the game that I've never done before that I probably wouldn't be very good at. So it's not going to be a survival series. We do have some money. We're going to start with some land. We're going to start with a farm. You know, um, I really had every intention of making this a role play series. And I can't say that it may not turn into a role play series. Those of you who've been with me for a long time know that I tend to find a map I like and I stay on it for, you know, ever. Uh, whether that be Old Ridge, you know, 160 something episodes. Drummer Farm, which was a little, you know, cut a little short, unfortunately, because of the fact that I was, you know, I had some some real life issues and everything, but it was still, you know, forty five episodes or whatever. Um, I've been playing on uh, Flint Hills for Farm Sim nineteen now since that map came out pretty early on in Farm Sim 19's life. I find some place I like and I stay there, uh, and so this series it will probably be fairly long running. This is a big map. There's lots to do. And at some point, I'm sure that I will come up with some idea for a role play element. Now, I may have driven by the entrance to my house. I don't know. <laughs> I've only been out here once, so I don't really remember 
uh, where the entrance is. And Roy's not particularly, uh, you know, forthcoming about where he, where he uh, puts his entrances. So you really have to find everything on his maps. So oh, there it is. There's our house. Um, so that's good. At least I found my house anyway. Bonus. Um, and and those of you who know me know that I'm going to get lost a million times on this map. You know, I played a, almost a thousand hours on Old Ridge in Farm Sim 15, and I still got lost on the map. So don't be surprised when I get lost on this one every five minutes too. Um, so this is our chunk of land. This is our house. Um, it's a little funny because the house is kind of set really far away from all the all the actual farm. Um, no, it's just cut through the hedge here and walk down the hill. I might make an opening there. I'm sure there's an opening, you know, somewhere, but I couldn't be bothered to find it. So anyway, so this is the farm. Um, it's it's a very nice chunk of land. You know, we've got the, the big modern cow barn here and, and with the feeding robot and everything. Um, you know, big old cow shed holds plenty of cows. Big old uh, pasture out the back here. So here's our pasture, um, you know, room for plenty, 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 plenty of animals. So those of you who know me and who've been with me for a long time know that I like the animal aspect of Farm Sim, it's specifically the dairy cow aspect of Farm Sim. I really enjoy the, 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 the work that goes into dairy farming, you know, the, the, the taking care of your animals, making sure they're healthy, making sure they're fed well, making sure they're producing as much milk as they can produce, right? Um, so this chunk of land, and I had a look at a bunch of places on the map, this chunk of land sort of satisfied all the things that I knew I was going to want to do long term on this map. Um, so it's got a, it's got a big old, uh, you know, dairy cow, uh, area on it, which is great. You know what I mean? Um, we're going to go through the hedge again. Um, it's got plenty and I mean plenty of sheds, you know, there's, I don't know, half a dozen sheds eight, nine, ten sheds on this map. So it's got a silo, uh, some bins, you know. Um, it's got a sheep area. I'm pretty sure this is a sheep area. I'm not 100% certain. Uh, it is. It is a sheep area. Um, so, you know, we could get into some sheep, which is not something that I do a lot of. I did it for a little while in Old Ridge. I did it on Drummerd, obviously. Um, and then I, I didn't do any animals in Farm Sim 19, which is surprising for me. Uh, I did all arable, all corn and soybeans on a big American map, right? That's what I'm still doing. But when I come to these, you know, these 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 Irish or English style maps, I like to do animals. Um, that's really the focus. So uh, there's also a very nice chicken coop here. I think this door opens, right? Does this door open? No, I guess it doesn't. Um, there's a there's a chicken. This is a chicken coop anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure one of these doors open. Uh, is it this one? Is this one open? No. Okay. I thought one of these doors open, but I guess they don't. Um, that's okay. Nice fenced-in area here. We'll just hop over that. Oh, I'm stuck on the fence. Got to back up and get a running start. There we go. More sheds. Um, these are actually covered um, bulk storage areas for potatoes or sugar beets or things like that. It's cool. It's got a cover on it. Um, you could put silage in here, but I don't think it'll compact. So, I mean, we can find out, actually, if I walk in here. Now, yeah, it doesn't have a, a compaction trigger or, or any of that, but that's fine. Don't really need that anyway, so... Uh, some random gate into a hedge. <laughs> this is a horse barn. Uh, you know, horses. Uh, I I never really got into the horses. You know, it's a lot of work. You got to ride them and all this other stuff. And I, I mean, this may go. Um, this may go and be replaced with something else. I, I I'm not really crazy about horses, so I wouldn't expect to see a lot of horses on here. But then again, you never know. I change my mind a thousand times. You know, in, in an episode. So. Or in a series, so who knows? I say you're not going to see horses. You might, you know. You never know with me. Uh, more sheds, obviously, as you would expect. Uh, and what's really cool about this is a drive-through silo on the other end of the map, which has every animal um, in a very small, compact area. The silos aren't drive-through, and because at least I haven't seen it, there doesn't seem to be a. Uh, fill in compact silo mode for course play anymore um, or at least not yet anyway having a drive through silo is nice because I can drive through here with a forge wagon or with a silage wagon or whatever dump it and then you know compact it down and I don't have to worry about backing in all the time 
Uh, of course, we should be able to handle this. It should be fine, even if I have to do all the actual leveling and compacting myself. Uh, so that's good, because I do want to do silage. I enjoy silage. I miss doing silage. I haven't done silage in a long time. A drummer was really the last place I did silage, because I don't need to do it on Flint Hills, because I don't have animals. So, this series is going to start off as a... I hate to say basic let's play because there's really no such thing. Everybody does things differently. Everybody, you know, approaches the way they play differently. One thing I can tell you what it will be is it will be as close to one to one. And you guys have been with me for a long time. Know what I mean when I say that as I can get it. I like the slow pace of farming. I will play at one time speed compression as much as I possibly can. Now, in the beginning, there's probably going to be some compression because, again, we're starting in August. It's not like we're starting in January in a brand new year. The game brings you in in August to give you something to do. Farm Sim, even this one, with, with all the new features and, and precision farming and all that, isn't really designed for a one-day-is-one-day um, time format. I've always sort of forced it to do that. Because I've always done a lot more steps than you really need to do in the game. Now, with the addition of all the different tillage types now, and with the addition of precision farming and the environmental score, and I'm still coming to grips with all that. I am by no means the expert on that. And I haven't watched a lot of videos because I want to learn it on my own. That's, that's how I do everything. I'd rather fumble through it and screw it up and everything and let you guys tell me what an idiot I am and then figure it out eventually my own, myself. The funny thing about precision farming is some of it is stuff that I've always done in farm sim anyway, even though it had no effect on the game, because I was trying to play as realistically as possible. I was trying to tell a story, you know, maybe introduce some new techniques and procedures and stuff to the game. And all this stuff is now included in the game, and it actually has an effect, which is fantastic. I love that. So playing as close to one-to-one -to -one as I can get makes more sense now. So perfect. Thank you, Giants. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so this is a great, this is a great, great area. This is a great farm. Um, I really, really like it. So this is, this is home base. Um, now we have $287,060 or 60 pounds, I should say. Uh, it's set to pounds, although I guess technically it should be set to euros. So you know what? Oh, look, look, flying deer, flying deer. <laughs> I guess those, those magical deer everybody was talking about. Oh, that's that's interesting. Okay, um, you know what? We should probably do before I go too much farther here. Uh, I should change all this over so that it's correct. Uh, Euros, kilometers, Celsius, hectares. Yes, I uh, don't want the radio on or any of that nonsense. Um, help window, colorblind mode. Don't need any of that. Field info, obviously. Um, yep. Okay. Very good. Um, and you know what? Just because it's always a good idea to save your game all the time. We'll save it. Okay, cool. So now we're on euros. Uh, save them out, obviously. doesn't change. The game doesn't do a, a, a currency conversion or anything. So this is episode one. It's basically a tour of our specific area of the map. Um, probably because I have precision farming installed. And because precision farming seems to dislike any, any mod. Um, I have a few mods installed. Hopefully it continues to keep working. Um... I know Giants released a hotfix uh, that was supposed to fix scripts, but mm, it hasn't really fixed them. And it also introduced a palette limit of 100 for PC players. Uh, there, is a, there is a mod uh, by GTX um, who that overrides that limit. Um, whether or not I'm actually going to need it or not, I don't know. Am I ever going to have 100 palettes? Production is not really my thing either, although it would be a shame not to do it because there's so much cool stuff now built into the game that it would be kind of a shame not to do it. So I'm going to do some of it. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to 100 pallets. I don't know that it matters that much, to be honest. As long as they don't introduce a limit about bales or about, you know, cows. And I understand that bales, pallets, and cows are all the same thing to the game. They're all a vehicle. So there could very well be... Uh, some limit to those to those things as well i don't know i guess we'll find out i know i want more than 100 cows <laughs> you know visually it's not going to show more than 100 but i i know i'm going to want more than 100 at some point one thing i'm not going to do at least in the beginning of this series until some sort of role play idea sort of gets lodged in my head or until somebody comes up with one for me you know 
and, and I like it. I'm not going to mess with the money. The money that we have is the money that we have. So we're going to have to make it last. We have $287,060 after I bought the land, after I bought that gator. We're going to have to buy tractors. We're going to have to buy implements. You know, we're going to have to buy fertilizer. We're going to have to buy animals. We're going to have to, you know what I mean? So, oh, excuse me. <laughs> that one snuck up on me. So the money we have is the money we have. So we have to be careful, which is not something that I do well. Uh, I, I, I make a lot of dumb decisions with money. I'll just drop money on. Oh, I like that. It's pretty it's shiny. It's fun. I like it. Boom. Bought it, right? Next thing you know, I have 50 bucks left. And I'm like, uh. So I'm going to have to pay a little bit more attention to money. Um, so I guess probably the first thing we should do is decide what the first thing we need to do is. I, I don't think I have. I, I'm pretty sure all of these fields are grass. Um, I think I set it up that way so that I would have just grass in my fields. Um. And no actual arable. Uh, if we look at the map, which hopefully doesn't crash the game, because lately when I've been switching back to the map, it's been crashing the game. So if we go back up to the actual map uh, and find our bit, our corner, we're in the we're in the bottom corner. Uh, yeah. So we have fields 22, 23, and 24, which I'm pretty sure are all grass. Um, let me just turn it on so that it shows up. Yeah. Yeah. So 22, 23, and 24 are all grass. Now there's a couple things we could do here. One is we could obviously harvest all the grass um, and either bale it or put it in the clamp um, for silage for the eventual eventuality to get to the cows uh, we could again cut it cut it hay it right sell the bales make a little bit of money selling bales is something that just never sits right with me I, I've never really sold a bale in my life um in farm sim probably the very beginning before i knew any better before i really you know developed my obsession with uh with animals but you know again to start off and when we don't have any animals well we're going to need some income right or we could just go boom right off the bat go buy 20 cows bring them down here you know make sure they have all the food and the water and everything they need and 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 and, and hit the ground running and to be honest that's kind of how i'm leaning but in order to do that we're going to need some food. We're going to need silage. We're going to need hay. We're going to need straw, which we're not going to be able to have. We're going to have to buy straw because we don't have any arable fields. And I'm not spending any more money on land right now. So we're going to need silage. We're going to need hay. We're going to need straw. We're going to need water. So we're going to need, you know, tractors to pull the implements that we need to create that stuff. Um, so I guess the first thing we should do is probably buy a tractor. Now it's a, it's a, a, a proper haul from the from where we are to the vehicle shop so this is the vehicle shop here where my cursor is and this is our farm down here where our blinking little arrow thing to tell us where we are is that's a proper haul so probably in this episode what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to find a tractor i'm going to find a mower um and maybe a tedder uh i guess we're going to need that and we're going to need a baler so we need a tractor a mower a tether and a baler and a wrapper. Now I doubt very much with $287,000 that I'm going to be buying a baler wrapper right off the bat. They're way too much money. I also need to get the Isaria, the Isaria Bess, uh, scout thing down here and do some soil samples of these fields. So I have an idea of what I'm looking at. I'm also tempted to put the, the Isaria uh, pro compact um, nitrogen sensors on whatever tractor we buy so that I can drive around and get a get a real time, you know, sort of view of how the nitrogen is in all these uh, fields. Now, this one's not going to matter because it's ready to be cut. So uh, I probably just cut this one regardless of, of what, you know, the yield's going to be. And we can start over again. Um, so I think that's what we should do. I think we should go look at some tractors now. My first thought is to go with something small, right? Because a small, you know, cheap um, or inexpensive. You know, good on fuel and, and all that sort of stuff. The problem that you run into, and it's not so bad on this end of the map. The problem you run into is some of these fields are very, very hilly. So while having a really small tractor, maybe an old tractor is cool, it's it's not always practical. If you've got a tractor that makes 60 horsepower and you're pulling a, a mower that takes 20 horsepower um, and you're going up a, a 45 degree hill, well, guess what? You're mowing at one mile an hour, which is not ideal. <laughs> So I think we we don't need to go right to large, um, not yet anyway. 
but I think we will go to medium and we'll just have a look. Now, obviously, you know, minimum of a hundred grand. So, you know, if we went with something older like an MF, uh, the Massey Ferguson 3670, $97,000, this is a really cool tractor. Um, you know, and I'm tempted to do that right off the bat. My, one of my all time favorite tractors of all time, the Fent, you know, 700 Vario, um, fantastic tractor, you know, big money, 162 grand, but it starts off at 150 horsepower, which is plenty, I think, for, for this operation right now. You know, but that's half of our money. Gone. Mm, I don't know. Um, I've never been a big fan of the Zetters, although this one is nice. I don't hate it. Um, you know, again, John Deere, right? Another under 100 grand tractor. Uh, 7810, you know, 175 horsepower. Not bad. Um, you know, then we can get a deep, something even cheaper. The 4755, 190 horsepower. Uh, power shift, which is nice. I, you know what's funny? I, I use this this uh, Valmet 8750 on the first my first go through with this map, and I'm a big fan of Valtra tractors. But ah, it's just it, it it's 190 horsepower, and it's a fairly heavy tractor. But it just doesn't seem like it has any power. I don't know what you know the, what 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 happened in the game here, but it just it, it doesn't feel like it has any power. Um, it's got a really good transmission though, so that you know again something to think about. Oh, I'm not the world's biggest fan of Kloss. Um, this Landini is nice, but again, eh, it's a lot of money for what you get. These McCormick Extra or VT drives are great, but man, the money they want for them. I mean, you're looking at 170 grand for the you know basic st stock model. That's a lot of money. Of course, JCB, right? Of course, why wouldn't you? And then, you know, what might be my favorite tractor of all time, the T7. Um, but we're into money that I don't want to spend. So I think... Uh, I think for this particular startup, we're going to go with this. We're going to go with the Massey Ferguson 3670. Um, and we're going to have a go and, and, and see what we can do to make it a little bit more fun. Um, you know, change some tires. Let's see. Michelin's. Uh, those are nice. Those are nice looking tires. I, I don't hate them. Ooh, Continentals. I like a Continental tire. Like how it says Tractor 85 on it, just in case you forgot, um, you know, you, you don't want to mount these on your station wagon. Boy, I like those. I like those a lot. Uh, Midas, these Midas tires are nice too. They got a really aggressive tread, like super aggressive. Those aren't bad. BKTs? Uh, you know what? You know what? I think I like those. I mean, they don't cost any extra money. It's all just tire brands, right? So it doesn't matter. Oh, Nokians with these like off-road chunky looking things. Now we're going to be doing a lot of grass. I don't necessarily think I want to. I want that for grass. Yikes! Those are even more aggressive. Holy crap! Wow. I mean, I could always put those on. Put the city tires on, right? That'd be good for the grass. That's not going to hurt the grass one bit. Uh, the problem with that is, is that that's a thousand bucks, and then I'd have to switch back and forth to regular tires when we get into, you know, not grass. So I think probably, you know what? I kind of like these BKTs. I think I'm gonna go with these. I mean, do we go with wides? I think we go with wides, right? I mean, uh, I'm not, don't need twins. So wide or wide too. What's the difference? Oh, the backs are a little wider. Yeah, I think that's wide enough. Now, a front loader, we're gonna need some way to move bales around. <laughs> My least, one of my least favorite things in the world to do, move bales around. Okay, well, we might as well throw a front loader on there too. Um, yeah, that'll work. And how much is this thing gonna cost? $14,000. Holy boy, those things, a hundred. Oh no, I'm sorry, 14, almost 15 grand for those things? That is crazy expensive. Okay, well, I think we gotta have them. The license plate's fine. Um, yeah, all right, well, there it is. There's our there's our tractor. License plate already in use. Oh, yeah, because I have the, I have the, um, uh, that course by license plate manager installed. So, so I'll just do this and do this. I'm not gonna do a lot of custom license plates, guys, like bipolar profit and all this. I, I'm not gonna do it. it. It takes too long and I, I can't really be bothered, so. Okay, um, AM 772UQ works for me. All right, bye. $115,450. Goodbye, money. 
Bye bye money. All right. Now, the next thing is we need a mower. Uh, oh, we're gonna need a roller afterwards so we can roll it to get some to get some uh, nutrient benefit out of it. Uh, mowers, 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 mowers. I tell you what, I'm really tempted to go with this Caneverland. Uh, I really like that mower. That's a good mower. Um, it's not stupid expensive. I'm not gonna get triples. That tractor is not really meant for triples anyway. Um, I could go with a with a regular Batwing style, I suppose, or I could go even smaller with like one of the 2.4 meters. This is 4.4 meters. Ooh, that's really small though. I wonder what's going to make the most sense. So this is 4.4 meters. This is four meters. You get. 0.4 more meter out of this. Now the only problem with neither one of these, they're not conditioners, so they don't lay the grass out. Um, but you know, uh, I could probably live with that. I mean, that takes 180 horsepower, that thing. This takes 80, so it's not going to be struggling. And at some point, I could always throw that on the front too. Um, and you know, just kind of double my production. I don't, uh, 18,000, that's not much. I mean, that's not bad at all, really. Okay, yeah, you know what? We'll have it. We'll have it. We will have it. We will have it. I'm not crazy about the way this thing folds, or not folds, but goes in a transport mode because um, it's a little unwieldy. But for 18 grand and it only takes 80 horsepower, I will have it. Okay. Now, uh, next thing. Next thing. Next thing is some kind of tether. Uh, how do I want to ted this? How do, you know, again, I think it's going to make sense to, to save money. In this and we'll just go with the small uh the smallest pottinger um it's only seven grand so we'll buy that yes okay Hundred forty-six thousand bp keep an eye on that money keep oh we're gonna need a wind rower too oh i forgot about that uh oh smallest wind rower does that make sense or does it make sense to go to a little bit bigger one and get more material in a row 4.7, 3.4. You know what? I think you gotta. I think you gotta go with the bigger one. I think you do. I mean, again, it's only a, it's only a one fan, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I wanna, if I wanna go that small. What's the first of the two rows? Ah, oh, the Samaz. Night. That's a huge jump, though. Nineteen grand, all the way up to nineteen grand. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're gonna go with the Kuhn. Um, the GA forty seven thirty one here. It's only a single fan, but I'll I, I'll live with it for now. We'll buy that. Okay. Now, I don't have any equipment mods in, so I know there's you know cheap old used balers out there. I, I know that. I don't have any equipment mods in because to be honest, I, the, the the equipment that's in the game is fantastic. So, you know, unless I find something I really can't live without, and I'm sure there'll be something. Um, I'm really planning on keeping. The, the the equipment is as vanilla uh, as I can. We'll see. That I'm sure that'll change too. <laughs> All right, balers. Oh, we could go with the small bales. That's properly cheap. Um. See, see, there you go. Right, the first baler wrapper is the class Uniwrap, which is a, a decent enough baler. The problem is it's heavy and it takes a lot of horsepower, and it's seventy eight thousand dollars, which isn't going to leave us very much money. So the only other one that I'd be interested in, um, do I want to do round bales? See, that's the thing. If you want to do round bales, round bales aren't ridiculously expensive. You want to do square bales, you're into serious money. I mean, you're into more money than I have, right? Of course, everybody knows how much I love this thing, um, but that's way more money than than I'm, you know, than we're ever going to be able to spend. And there's there's no need to ever for us to have that. You know what I mean? To have this big pack. That's a contractor rig. That's a, you know, go out and make bales 24 hours a day kind of thing. So, uh, I mean, we could, if we're going to go without a wrapper, it probably makes sense to go as cheap without a wrapper as possible. So it's down to the Pottinger or the Coon. I've used the wrapper version of this baler, and it's fine. It works just fine. So I think 
Yeah, you know what? I think we go with this. Um, it's not too fiddly, and it, it you know, and it works good. So, um, yeah, you know what I mean. Do we do we have a go with the tires? Maybe we make uh, get some different tires on it. I like these BKT tires. I gotta be honest. I think we're gonna go with those. Um, all right. Well, forty eight grand. Oh yeah, license plate. Sorry, sorry. Keep forgetting about that. Here we go. Click it. Get a new random one. Off we go. There's our license plate, and we will buy that. Okay. All right. Now let's have a tab. So there's our Gator, and there's our tractor. And all of our stuff that we have to get back to the um, farm. So that's a that's a nice looking tractor. Now, I guess I probably should have bought some kind of front loader for this. Huh? I forgot about that. Oh, we're down to ninety grand. Okay. All right. Yeah, we need a front loader. <laughs> we need a front loader and some kind of bail uh, device here. So uh, I don't know which. Um, will it tell me actually? I guess it doesn't really matter, huh? Okay. Do we want, uh, what is the difference? Q3M or Q4M or Q5M, are these just widths? Is that what, is that what the difference is? These are just bigger, um, so small tractor, medium tractor, big tractor, is that how this works? I don't know, so medium tractor, let's try this one. Let's see if this one works. Um, boy, I wish they'd tell you what tractor it fit though. I feel like an idiot if I get the wrong one. Uh, not that I'm, I've never been an idiot before. I can actually make it red. Oh, I could. Hey, do we do that? I mean, it's only 50 bucks, right? That's that's not bad. All right. Yeah, you know what? Let's find out. 7,500 bucks. All right. We'll have it. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be making regular bales and silage bales, right? So we're going to need... Uh, We're going to spike, and we're going to need some kind of round bale lifter. Oh, the round bale lifters. What a nightmare, right? Uh, okay, well, all right. Do they not make a... Which one do I actually want to use? Well, okay, I'm going to start with this. That'll be the first thing I guess for hay bales and stuff. Uh, this one squeezes it and lifts them. This one, you sort of squeeze it between and lift it. You know what? This one's a little cheaper. We'll go with this one. Wrap bale handler, bale spike. Oh, so you could change it. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Well, all right then. Maybe I just need to buy this then. Boy, if I'd have paid attention. I don't know if there's a workshop up there, though. I don't think I want to drive all the way back here just to change these spikes. We'll have to uh, we'll have to put down a, a workshop at some point too. Yeah, all right, we'll have that. That's fine. Okay, all right, cool. Now again, just bought a bunch of stuff. Save the game. <laughs> all right, all right, let's fire this up. Ooh, sounds like a massy. Very nice. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice rig. I I really really like these tires too. I like this little profile they have in between the lugs. I think that's neat. Okay, where's the... Uh, we got to see if this... Um, the first thing we got to see is... Is this... Uh, front loader going to fit? I should probably jump in so I can see what I'm doing. with the view so I can now please fit so I didn't just waste all this money oh, are you gonna fit are you gonna fit are you gonna fit oh you're not gonna fit you're too small oh no oh no are you too small yeah you're way too small huh oh maybe not maybe not maybe I'm just an idiot no it it's gonna fit there it is excellent I mean, it's not ideal, right? But it fits and it works. Cool. It is a little too small, though. <laughs> eh, not really. I mean, the, the three point, you shouldn't really have a three point on it anyway when you're going to do this. So, okay. 
Uh, what do we want to take with us? What do we? Well, we're going to need the mower first, right? So we might as well put some kind of implement on the front loader, and then we can take the mower as well. Now, safety first. Point the bale spikes down, so in case you run into anybody. Hook up the mower. Not even close, huh? And there we go. Mower's hooked up. All right, now we can take the long drive back to the. Ah, oh, did I not put beacons on this thing? I don't think I had an option for be beacons. Okay, well that's okay because I have. I'll just put the four ways on. That's fine. All right. There's traffic on this map, and I do have it turned on, so I have to keep an eye out, make sure I'm not going to pull up in front of somebody. Can't quite see. I'm going to raise that up a little bit. Do I have any other gear options here? No. Four and drive is as, is as fast as this thing's going to be. 39? That's not bad. So yeah, so I think I'm just going to, what I'm going to do for this episode, because this episode's been long and rambly enough, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this back um, and park it up. Uh, in the next episode, we will be mowing. Uh, well, somebody will be mowing, whether it's course player or hired worker or somebody. Um, we're going to need another tractor, uh, but for right this second, with $80,000, I'm going to need money to buy bales. I'm going to need money... To, for, to buy cows. Might as well start with cows, right? Oh, I'm going to need some kind of... Unless I use this milk robot. Or not the milk robot, but the feeding robot. Which, i got to be honest, I'm not 100% certain how to use. I was seriously thinking about maybe just getting a... Um, a mix wagon, you know? Because I'm not 100% up on how to use this milk robot. But I suppose I can figure it out. That might be entertaining for you guys to watch me fumble around with that. And I'm sure you'll be full of comments. and uh, At least I hope you will be anyway um, about how, how that works. So while we drive back to the farm, I'll say this, guys. Thanks for all the comments, guys. It really means a lot. It, you know, it, a lot of you have been with me for a very long time. And it means a ton to me that you guys have stuck around for all my long breaks and all my absences and all my nonsense and everything else. It means everything to me. I say this all the time, but I mean it, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. For, for hanging out and for watching the videos and, you know, and, and, and everything else that you do, your comments and the likes and, and, and all that sort of stuff. That, that's the reason I do it. You know what I mean? This isn't about money. This isn't about branding, trying to become a big farm sim YouTuber or any of that. It's about yeah, playing the game, having fun, and, and sharing that with you guys. That's all it is. And the fact that you guys still like watching the videos means everything to me, and thank you so much. If you're new to the channel and you don't mind the rambly, you know, unfocusedness, that, that is invariably my videos. And you want to see how I play Farm Sim. And you want to see how Maple evolves. Uh, then by all means, click the subscribe button. That's all you ever have to do here. Click click the subscribe button, you know, and, and click like if you like the video. And, and that's all you ever have to do. And I will be greatly appreciative of that. Hey, look at that, guys. We made it back to the farm without getting lost. Uh, Bonus. Okay, um, so I think I don't see any point in parking this up because we are going to have to, uh, we are going to be using it in the next episode. So we'll just hop out here. Um, is it, it's not this field. Which one was done? I don't remember now. Was it this one? Now, obviously, this is a pasture, right? I get it. I, I, I understand that, but I'm still going to cut it anyway. Uh, this one. Okay, and of course this is the cow pasture. But the cows don't eat the grass in Farm Sim 22 anyway, or Farm Sim anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I can cut it, so it'll be fine. Um, there's no point in me doing anything to this now. It needs it needs to be harvested, so uh, it needs plowing, which is going to obviously affect my, my environmental score uh, with precision farming, but whatever. 
Oh, the deer like it though, so that's good. At least they came down out of the sky now. <laughs> so anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, let me know what you think. Comments, suggestions, tips, recommendations. Um, you know, anything you want to leave me, I read everything. I reply to almost everything. Um, and as always, thanks for stopping by. This is going to be a this is going to be a fun ride, guys. Maple Farm Farming Sim Simulator 22 and Bipolar Profit. What more could you ask for? <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Bye, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, let me know what you think. And this is the Bipolar Prophet saying, see you later.